things and bring it all together, do you think that there is a new Jim Crow? Like, is there a racial caste system being created, like purposefully? Or do you think Michelle Alexander is maybe too radical? Like, what are your thoughts overall? Like, I think all of us, of course, no doubt, we can see that there are racist policies being enacted, like, there's disproportionate representation of black women in particular being incarcerated and being disenfranchised, being like having their voting rights taken away. Um, you were talking about the housing, like being, you know, finding it difficult to find a job, like all of those things. But is there like a targeted new Jim Crow type of system? What are you, what are your thoughts? Anything is fine. I just wonder, because we can agree with her on some like issues, but maybe not the whole thing. What do you think, Grace? I think that there is like, that all this stuff is actually happening. I don't think any of this is like a conspiracy theory. Yeah. But I don't think that anyone is like sitting in their office writing down, let me make sure that black people are enslaved by yeah. this week. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> how many? <laughs> right. There's like an evil politician somewhere in his office writing exactly. down how many black people have been in prison this week. Yeah. I don't think that's how it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> But I do feel like all of this is happening, and it's just going to happen. I don't want to say naturally, because it isn't natural. Right. They're forcing us. Right. But it's a cycle. It's a cycle. Uh, it's a cycle. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so I'm making some fresh Great. Hold on. Yeah. Go, Megan. Um, I totally agree with Grace, and like the cycle kind of reminded me of my opinion is that, um, especially a lot of like older people who. Um, just like have family roots that older white people who have family roots that might have been racist it's harder for them like we were all kind of born into this like new age at least like I think I, I think we were like where you're kind of born like not racist and like you we are more like accepting I think than um, I would say like my grandparents or, like people of that age so I think it honestly just takes time for like them to leave and then like yeah, we yeah. all yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. racist okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like once this generation is that age like making laws and stuff and yeah. running like businesses and companies it it'll be like a little bit better and I think naturally that'll just happen like even once we're gone just like mm -hmm. it'll get better I think. Okay. Thank you. Liam or no I'm sorry it was Celeste. So they're encouraged to like get policy makers to keep doing this, and no, no, no politician wants to like see, be seen as like weak on crime yes. because in the news they're just like this man wants to let criminals on the street right. and into your homes. Right. Are you gonna vote for him? Right. Yeah. <laughs> so I hear you. I hear you. Do you and it's you so do. like it's equivalent to political suicide. Yes, for sure, for sure. Like, um, you can say what you want about politicians, but no politician wants to lose their job. Right. And the best way to lose your job is to reduce, like, um, sentencing. Okay, okay. Um, do you think it is a, you said that it, um, I hear you when you say that, like, it's about money. So do you think it is a purposeful thing? Well, it's, per well, the thing is, is that, there, it's purposeful, definitely. Yes, yeah. Like there are parts who are, there are definitely policymakers and politicians who are just racist mm -hmm. and are racist against minorities. Mm -hmm. And then you have prison systems who want to make a profit too, mm -hmm. and they kind of hold each other hand. Yeah, I see. 
because like it's like it's easier to target some communities than others. It's easier to target some people than others. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I think also it's it's kind of difficult to call it like the new Jim Crow because mm -hmm. I feel like this is something that's been happening, you know, since mm -hmm. since emancipation, which is Jim Crow. You know, there's always been a way that Ooh, yeah. the, the majority has kind of been yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think because of that, um, so even though today it might not be, you know, you know, explicitly racism that is motivating these kind of things, I think we all do kind of operate on these implicit biases um, that kind of were instilled in us because of the more open racism that used to exist. And I think there, there are policies like literacy tests and grandfather clauses and all that kind of stuff that was very openly racist and kind of then from that showed like um, just the kind of showed a societal bias that was then kind of instilled on new generations and they, they have these then internal biases that yes. they kind of carry out yes. into things like sentencing and war on drugs and all that. And so yeah. I think it just kind of persists because it has existed in the past and just kind of like that sort of mentality carries even if it's not as obvious. That's amazing. I, yeah, absolutely, I agree. Yes, Garrett? Speaking to like why white people might not be exactly comfortable talking about race, mm -hmm. I think that a lot of it is, you know, it's what Liam said, like mm -hmm. a lot of white people are unable to like acknowledge the advantages that they've been given in life. But a lot of it, and this is just like from my own perspective, is I think people are afraid of being accused of being racist. Yes. And so that I think kind of holds back the conversation. Yeah. Um, and like people have committed to that that's like, true the reason yeah. like <laughs> marijuana and like crack cocaine mm -hmm. were, were like so cracked down on is because like during the 60s and 70s like crack cocaine was like used by African Americans and marijuana was used by anti-war protesters mm -hmm. like it, they had these like um, political connections really let go of and we have would just like let continue so I kind of I agree with William that that maybe like politicians aren't being overtly racist now but they're willing to use these um, this, yeah these legacy of like racist yeah. programs and like um, are willing to like Yeah, take advantage of like a popular okay. uh, politics or like politics to further their own political Yeah. Wow, you guys. Okay, so fast. We gotta wrap up, but go in because we're gonna leave. So, <coughs> okay. just on the note of private prison, mm -hmm. they very much are designed to make money and designed to get people back. One who has even seen markets and investors as like a good return, as in like we have good, a good amount of people coming back. Which, like, if you're thinking about prison, you're thinking rehabilitation, reintroduction to society, not bring them back. Um, that's not, like, the idea you want with investors. And that was, like, an official statement sent out to investors. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, there was something else, but I don't remember what it was. Okay. And where did you hear that? Was it, it like a been, documentary? It might have been. Yeah. It was a documentary. I just don't remember. Wow. Last words, yes. Well, I was gonna say like also like okay. as William was saying like it's hard for politicians to be tough on crime because a lot mm -hmm. of them come here and get ready to kill people. Like Obama, mm -hmm. who was like critic, who like actually like brought attention and like heavily criticized this uh, yeah. uh, this thing. He uh, he saved a lot of his pardons for like in reduced sentences to like after he was reelected and like in the last days of his term. Yes. So like, when they 
there's as much political backlash because mm. you're about to leave. Yes, yes. You're so right. Thank you. Ugh. Okay. Do you want to make welcome? Your grandma? Awesome. You guys, ah, uh, thank you. Thank you so, so, so much. Okay. So, actually, this is a perfect segue because um, your, one of your prompts I'm giving you two choices. So, you do have an essay tomorrow, and I have crafted two <laughs> different prompts for you to choose from. They're both synthesis essays. So you don't get a choice on the type of essay, but you get a choice on the topic. So one of them actually is about colorblind policing. You mentioned it, and I think maybe Callie mentioned it. So nice job. Um, it is about that. So it's like taking this, but extending it perhaps a little bit. Um, broken Windows is a part of that. Like there's an excerpt of Broken Windows as one of the sources. Um, so that's that. And then the other one is on the other piece of this unit, which was gender. So if you're interested, if you're kind of done, if you're over this topic a little bit and you want to explore gender instead, maybe choose that one. And that one specifically is about the hashtag MeToo movement and its potential legacy. Yeah. And yes, if you're wondering, I know, if you're wondering, can I choose, can I like see both of them? Yeah, no problem. Okay, so I'm going to pass it out.